everyone. Today we are going to be grooming Ernie's head. I know that we have already talked about grooming his top coat and we've also talked about grooming his tail. But today we're going to jump into his head. So the first thing we're going to do is just comb through and see what we're working with. A lot of this top skull should be stripped out and carded. So we're going to strip out and card as much of that as we can. But you will soon realize that we can't pull much out. So this is a coarse stripping knife. And as you can see, there is not much hair coming out. He has a white patch on his head, so that's where that's coming from. But not much is coming out with that coarse stripping knife. So we're going to move on to a fine stripping knife and just card the hair on the top of his head and see where that gets us. As you can see before I uh, get that off, that fine knife was able to take out a lot more undercoat um, on his top skull. So we're going to keep going and working with that fine knife to see if we can get it much smoother before moving on with some shears. We want him to appear natural and clean looking. So we're going to try to do things as pure as possible to start and then move on. He has a tuft that turns into a little cowlick right here. So there's quite a bit of hair so that's why I'm kind of working on this section quite a bit. <clears throat> Now on pet dogs, you could do a variety of different things on this top skull portion of the head. A lot of times it's just easier to just take a clipper to this section so it's nice and smooth and sleek and it's quick and it helps the dog because when you're having to pull all this little hair um, and the dog's not used to it, it can be a little annoying to the dog. Ernie's pretty used to it. As you can see, he's falling asleep as I'm doing this, so it's not a big deal. Perfect. So now that I have carded out his top skull, I'm gonna go in with these double-sided thinning shears and just clean everything up. This side portion of the skull blending into the ears, you wanna be nice and tight to the skull so that you can show off the amazing skull that your dog has. So I'm going, instead of going like this, at first I'm going to go in from underneath and just debulk a little bit. You want to just do one cut at a time and then comb through to see what you're working with. If you just keep chopping away, you can eventually either create a bald spot or potentially snag the skin of the dog, which is, neither of those are good things. So just one cut, comb through, see how it looks, one cut through see how it looks and you're just going to keep repeating that process all along this side of the skull. Good oh boy Ernie.
As you're moving, you can tell that these little eyebrow portions are kind of poofy, and it's distracting from the sleek overall appearance. Um, all of this fluff, too, and the whiskers are also kind of distracting from a sleek, clean look. So eventually, we're going to shave these, and we're going to um, clip shorter right here. Um, ideally, this would lay flat. Ernie has bushy eyebrows, so we're going to trim those off. So his eyes are closed right now, which is pretty convenient to what I'm doing. I'm always careful around the eye anyway, but it's nice when they're falling asleep. When they do have their eyes closed, it's also less chance of getting hair in the eyeball, which doesn't seem comfortable. I don't like having hair in my eye. I'm sure they don't either. So as you can see, his head looks nice and sleek on this side where, oh, Ernie. Whereas this side, you have this puffy eyebrow, um, some sticky outies, um, but this side blends in smoothly to the ear. So now that we have this side of the head pretty well done, we're gonna take our thinning shears. We were going under and debulking now we're gonna go on top of the coat and get anything that's sticking out. Um, sometimes there is different spaces created when you're going underneath for just air to catch the hair and lift it. So by doing this, you're just trimming anything that is sticking up from when you're trimming underneath. When you do just a little at a time, you can see that I'm making multiple cuts, but I'm never making one cut in the same space because we don't want to create that hole. So this is looking pretty good. 